Hi guys and welcome to another episode of Kabir Considers. In this video, I'm going to react to the top 10 UFO sightings caught on camera. Now this sort of thing is right up my street. Honestly, I think space and aliens and time travel, that kind of thing is probably in my top two or top three most interesting topics for me. Like I'm a firm believer that I don't think we're alone in the universe. I just cannot see that being conceivably possible. You know, they say that there's more planets out there than there are grains of sand on Earth. We're talking hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of billions of planets. Like I just can't see us being the only intelligent life out there. But whether we've been visited by them is just another topic because space is so huge. You know, the, the closest star to us is Proxima Centauri and that would take us with our fastest ever man-made uh, object, which I think is either Voyager 1, I think it might be Voyager 1, it would still take like a thousand years to get there. So, you know, unless these species are way more advanced, and if they are way more advanced than us, why would they be interested in us, maybe? Just to kind of observe us, I guess? Like, we observe ants, maybe? I don't know. Like, really, really interesting. But my mind is open. If I see any footage in this video that, to me, is just fairly conclusive, I will definitely not just dismiss it. I would love to be proven, you know, wrong. I'd love to think that, you know, we, we do get visited because that would just be so cool. So yeah, this video I know is gonna be really, really interesting to watch. Let's do it. Are we alone in the universe? This evidence suggests we aren't. Welcome to Watch Mojo, And today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 UFOs caught on camera. For this list, we're looking at the most famous, argued about and unusual videos of unidentified flying objects. If you like what you're hearing, be sure to check out the full song at the link below. The ISS Light Beam In 2016, a video surfaced on YouTube from NASA's live feed of the International Space Station, seemingly showing an object making atmospheric entry. The feed was then suspiciously cut off, although NASA claims that this was due to technical difficulties and the object was likely debris or lights from Earth. However, a subsequent video from the same feed showed what appeared to be a similar object departing Earth, followed by a bright golden beam of light. Is this a UFO leaving the Earth making the jump to hyperspace? These are real images from the International Space Station's live feed. They show a spherical object leaving the vicinity of the Earth and traveling upwards. As the object disappears, a beam of light shoots out. This wouldn't be the last time that conspiracy theorists gravitated to- But could that not just be maybe a satellite? Like, oh man. Towards the ISS. In 2020, the feed captured another object moving over Earth. It was later reported that this was a retired communications component being jettisoned, although we're definitely keeping a close watch on the ISS. We discard of our trash and, um, and equipment that's, uh, that's been put through its paces and is now retired. Number nine, the ST. Hmm, that, that last astronaut, he, he didn't really sound convincing in his explanation. It kind of sounded like he was just trying to think of something plausible to say. <sighs> My initial hunch is that thing was like a satellite, but I don't know. I just don't know. ES-48 incident. Tony, what can you tell us about this last minute delay and what's happening right now? Launched on September 12th, 1991, the STS-48 mission's goal was to deploy satellites from the space shuttle Discovery. This scene shows the actual release of URs with the mechanical arm. The arm is being backed away from the spacecraft. In UFO circles, though, the mission is best remembered for footage captured on September 15th. While not easy to make out, the video shows objects zooming by and bright lights flashing in Earth's orbit. According to NASA, these were ice particles responding to the engine jets. Astronomer Phil Plate has backed up these claims, but we gotta admit, the believer in us likes to wonder. It's not the only space shuttle mission to have caught ufologists' eyes. In 1996, footage from STS-75 seemed to show objects buzzing around the broken tether of a drifting satellite. Debris or curious visitors? Well, the long line is, uh, is a tether, um, and uh, there's a little bit of debris that uh, kind of flies with us. Number eight, the Kaikoura lights. Mm, you, it does make me think, like, how much information does NASA have that, you know, they don't reveal to the world for fear of maybe people panicking and stuff? 
Like, they must have, like, a lot of, you know, info that they keep classified. It's only fitting that the Kaikota light surfaced the year after Star Wars and Close Encounters of the Third Kind hit theaters. The heck? What movie is this? New Zealand's Kaikota mountain ranges caught the media's attention on December 21st, 1978, when a cargo plane crew observed house-sized lights flashing around the aircraft for several minutes. Thousands of UFO documents have been released by the New Zealand Air Force. The documents released under freedom of information laws cover sightings dating back to 1954. Air traffic control specialists from Wellington tracked the lights, which an Australian television crew then recorded in color. The TV crew came along for the cargo plane's next flight from Wellington back to Christchurch. Shortly after takeoff, the crew captured footage of a giant illuminated orb. New Zealand's Ministry of Defense has provided several possible explanations, including lights from boats, cars, or Venus. But alternative explanations abound. Others say it could have been an unusually bright sighting of Venus or merely radio and light wave transmissions. But for those who believe, even the publication of such sightings is a breakthrough. Number seven. This is the thing, because it's just a bit of light you can see. There's a million things it could be. Like what we need is like a high quality, high definition image of something that is clearly not from Earth. That's what we need. Like just a little dot of light is just not enough. The Phoenix Lights. The Phoenix Lights have inspired a documentary and multiple horror movies, but nobody can say for sure what happened on March 13th, 1997. In 1997, you took part in one of the largest military cover-ups in United States history. That's correct. This incident can be broken into two phases. First, a V-shaped formation was seen flying over Phoenix, although little footage exists of this event, and the footage we do have is low quality. There's more documentation of the second event. But these could quite easily be five fighter jets. These could easily be five, you know, F-16s or F-22s. Which saw five circular lights floating in the night sky. Because you can kind of see the wings as well, can't you? There were many events starting at 3 p.m. in the afternoon and continuing all the way until 5.30 the next morning. Even with numerous photographs, videos, and eyewitness accounts, though, a giant question mark continues to hover over mm. Phoenix. While the U.S. Air Force chalked the lights up to military flares, many have argued against these claims, and even Arizona Governor Fife Symington described what he saw as, quote, otherworldly. Well, I saw a, uh, a huge craft just kind of come right over Squaw Peak. Um, that was, you know, it was just breathtaking. Number six, the Chilean Navy. The Chilean government agency which investigates UFOs or unidentified aerial phenomenon has declassified and released never before seen video from 2014 showing a mysterious flying object of which they suggest could have been a UFO. A little speck can certainly stir up a lot of speculation. In 2017, the Chilean government agency tasked with examining UFO sightings released footage of a flying object that defied explanation. The footage, which had been classified for almost three years, was taken by the Chilean Navy from a helicopter during the day. The pilot failed to make contact with the object, which moved like another helicopter. Even more curious, the object didn't pop up on air traffic control radar. In two instances, the object ejected some type of gas or liquid with high thermal tracking. I mean, the thing is, it, it doesn't look aerodynamic. It doesn't look like a plane that we would build, like humans. It just looks like a blob, you know? I can't think of any man-made aircraft that has this kind of silhouette. Captured on video, you can see a massive plume of material trailing yeah. behind the object. Most mysterious of all, the UFO released an unknown substance and vanished into the sky. Experts were stumped, with the agency's director saying, quote, we do not know what it was, but we do not know what it was not. Well, that's reassuring. After an extensive study, the Committee for the Study of Anonymous Aerial Phenomena agreed it had all the characteristics to be classified as an unidentified aerial phenomenon. Number five. I mean, that one is definitely the most convincing so far for me. Definitely the most convincing. The Mexican Air Force video. On March 5, 2004, the Mexican Air Force recorded footage of 11 UFOs at 11,500 feet above southern Campeche state. Surrounding a military jet, these lights were detected during a routine search for drug traffickers. Jets pursued the UFOs, but eventually gave up and the objects disappeared. 
While some believe this was the work of flares, explanations also range from ball lightning to a meteorite deteriorating in Earth's atmosphere. Whatever these objects were, infrared equipment operator Lieutenant Mario Adrian Vasquez is convinced that they were, quote, completely real. Pilot Major Magdaleno Castañón went so far as to suggest that the UFOs knew they were being pursued. Number 4. The Aguadilla Airport Incident I don't believe in you in my life. Even by UFO standards, this one's perplexing. It all started in April 2013 at the Rafael what Hernandez Airport, located in Aguadilla, Puerto Rico. A video was I mean, at first glance, it looks like a helicopter, kind of, but it's going way too quick to be a helicopter. Taken of an unknown object swiftly flying over land and then seeming to submerge underwater. After doing so multiple times, the object what? appears to split in two. Supposedly, the U.S. Department of Homeland Security tried to keep this under wraps, but the video was eventually leaked by an anonymous whistleblower. A group known as the Scientific Coalition for Ufology was responsible for posting the footage online. According to the SCU website, it, quote, exhibits characteristics that cannot be explained by any known aircraft or natural mm. phenomenon. Number three. Yeah, man, it looked like it was uh, breaking the sound barrier at times, and then it di dove into the water and then split. I can't think of any aircraft that we've got that's amphibious like that, that that's quick enough to, to break the sound barrier and can operate in water as well. I just can't think of a single one. Go fast. Our top three UFO sightings are actually part of a package, although- Unless maybe it was some kind of torpedo? Each has a distinctive signature. Pentagon has now declassified three videos showing Navy fighter pilots interacting with unidentified flying objects. Watch. Filmed by the US Navy and published online in the late 2010s, they were declassified and officially released by the Pentagon in 2020. Hey, go ahead. <laughs> Released under the file name Go Fast, this video was taken over the East Coast in January 2015 by an F-A-18F Super Hornet during what the USS that? Theodore Roosevelt UFO incidents. The footage was captured using Is this the uh, the, the Tic Tac video I've heard of? Raytheon's Advanced Targeting Forward-Looking Infrared Pod, or AT FLIR. And just as entertaining as the footage itself is the fighter pilot's comments. While the audio is somewhat hard to understand, you can certainly grasp the astonishment they experienced while watching the object. Oh my gosh, dude. Wow, look at that, man. Look at the fly. <laughs> Number two. Oh man, what was that thing? It was kind of in the center of the screen, so I thought maybe it was just like some kind of dead pixel. Fleer one. It's a clear blue sky. There's no wind. And you see this tic tac, it's just this white oh, so object this is randomly the moving around. It makes the hair on the back of your neck stand up a little bit. Also released by the Pentagon, FLIR 1 was filmed on November 14, 2004, around the San Diego coastline. Like Go Fast, this video was also taken aboard a Super Hornet using AT FLIR. The footage was captured during the USS Nimitz UFO incident, in which the Navy had a radar visual encounter. The video centers on a dark round object that suddenly moves slightly to the left. After lingering a little while longer, the object quickly darts even further until it's completely out of sight. Hmm. Commander David Fravor can't tell you exactly what the object was, but he recalls that it, quote, accelerated like nothing he'd ever seen. There's no propulsion, there's no wings. It rapidly accelerates and disappears, like poof, gone. It's the weirdest thing I've ever seen in my life. Hmm. I chased a UFO. Before we continue, and that man is an ex, you know, he's, he was a member of the Air Force, right? Military. So this guy wouldn't just lie. He had the video footage as well. So makes it really credible. And you be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, Gimbal. Rounding out this trio of UFO videos is Gimbal, which the Navy captured the same year as Go Fast. Oh my gosh. Oh, oh going man. against the wind. The wind's 120 knots to the west. Often getting that? mixed up with the USS Nimitz UFO incident, this sighting actually took place aboard the USS Theodore Roosevelt by the coast of Florida. Out of the three videos, the object in Gimbal arguably looks the most like a flying saucer. Before you jump to any what conclusions, skeptical investigator Mick West has called all three of these sightings into question, believing the gimbal object is just a plane. Well, if there's like a, thing. a plane? A, a pl there's nothing about the shape that resembles a plane, though. It's rotating. Honestly, it's the rotating world may never as well. Know. 
If you think this is all of the UFO information that the U.S. government's been sitting on, former Senator Harry Reid claims that it, quote, only scratches the surface. Because I don't think no one has the answers. And that is too bad because there are answers out there. But we're not going to get answers just by hoping they come. We can have to take some work. Do you agree with our picks? Mm. Let us know in the comments. And hey, if you're a fan of... Man, the last two or three videos kind of have me convinced, I'm not going to lie, because they just didn't resemble anything that we build that, with, with, that, that flies. They just didn't look... They didn't have any wings. They didn't have... They were way too big to be drones. Like, of any kind, any kind of drone. Like, whether it's the military drones that are quite large and... But they still have wings. They still have wings. They still... They're, they're, they're aerodynamic. These... The last three were just round. Round in nature. Like, we, I don't think we peeled anything apart from those old, you know, hot air balloons. The, but the, the, these were traveling at really, really quick speeds. And the one that was flying real fast, breaking the sound barrier, and then, then went into the water, split, and continued to go? How do you explain that, man? Let me know in the comments if you guys have any solid explanations that can kind of debunk these. But I, I think I'm convinced. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.